documentary filmmaker Tommy Weir is always on the lookout for stories, and he found a great one in Alabama native Eugene Walter, his latest subject. Walter was a writer, playwright, foodie, and artist extraordinaire. His boundless talent helped him leap from Mobile to New York, Paris, and Rome, where he partied with a who's who of mid-century celebrities, from Dylan Thomas and William Faulkner to Judy Garland and Tallulah Bankhead. He had a very interesting life. He was a contemporary of Truman Capote, became a cryptographer in World War II, came back, went to New York, and, and participated in, in some of the um, uh, events there in post-war New York. He was an artist. Uh, he went to Paris and, and helped start uh, the Paris Review with George Plimpton, wrote some of the uh, initial articles and short stories for that publication. Then he went to Rome, where he was an actor in Fellini's films, about 60 of Fellini's films. He was also a, a stage designer, and he also translated Italian scripts to English. And he stayed there for a while, and uh, through, he, he was known for throwing big parties and throwing money around, sort of uh, just bouncing from place to place, really, uh, as an artist, you know, looking for patrons, essentially. He was, uh, the title of the documentary is Eugene Walter, The Last Bohemian. Walter the artist was always a success and always looking for the next challenge. When he was in Europe, Walter wrote Great Southern Cooking, one of the first and most famous cookbooks celebrating the dining tables of Dixie. Uh, around this time also, he wrote, a, uh, wrote some books, won a couple of prizes for his books, but he never really stuck to one thing at one time. As soon as he got successful in one subject, he would tend to turn his attention to something else. One thing that always attracted Walter's attention was a good party especially his own. Oh, there were parties, 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 he wrote in his autobiography, Milking the Moon. But for me, almost anything is reason for a party. The first tulips in spring, have a party. The first green peas are in, have a party. I just think that way. That's how I think. The reason I have never had more than $10 to my name. If I had $10, I gave a party. If I had $200, I gave a very good party. He made the comment once, you know, nobody ever told me that there were banks to put money in. I just simply made it and threw it out the window. Since he couldn't hang on to his own money, Walter had to find other sources of steady income. He, he tended to wear out his welcome because some people would consider him a moocher and a hanger-on. He never really had a steady job. He was always looking for a patron uh, to sort of support him while he did his creative endeavors. Eventually, Eugene Walter decided to return to the mobile of his youth. But the city wasn't overwhelmed by his return. I mean, he had his followers, and he had people who had picked up on some of his writings. But uh, it wasn't as big a homecoming as he might have hoped. Uh, he wrote a couple of books. He wrote poetry. He did uh, little uh, doodling sketches that he would sell. So he spent his time uh, sketching and writing and, and uh, again, sort of living off the more wealthy populace of, of, of Mobile. He would maybe pay them by having them over for dinner and create some dinner. He would go out into his yard and, and pick dandelion leaves and, and create a, a salad with just based on things that he had he might have grown or might have been just growing in his yard. He would make a big, big deal out of it. It was a big occasion to just sit down and dinner with Eugene Walter. 